I alluded to steering in the last section on mark rounding, so I suppose I'd better say something about that. And I listed them off in uh, three categories. The first one was sails, the second one was hull, and the third one was rudder. Sails. If any of you have sailed sail boards, you know that when you first learn to sail sail board, it's the position of the sail that steers the ball. And it's the number one thing. If you're teaching yourself slow boat control, your boat's stationary. Is the rudder even going to work? And the answer is no, it's not going to work. It's doing nothing and there's no water flow over it, so it can't actually do anything. Again, if you're doing slow boat control, is the hull form going to help you steer? No, it's not because there's no water flowing past you. So the number one steering tool is actually sails. And sailing is all about balance. It doesn't matter if you're in a small boat like ours or a big cruising boat crossing the ocean, it's all about balance. So we need to think about it here for a second. If that's my mast, that's my mainsail, that's my headsail, and underneath that, I've got a, rudder, a centre board and a rudder bike. To simplify it, the boat is going to pivot around the centre board. It's not quite the case. The hull, play, the hull and the rudder play a point in it as well, but to keep it simple for everybody, let's just pretend that the centre board is our pivot point. It's the thing in the water that the boat spins on. Now if I quickly pop this into a plan view again. There's my centre board, that's my pivot point. Now let's pretend it's a seesaw. There's the pivot of the seesaw. Everyone can see that, I hope. I've got wind now coming down the board. If that's a seesaw and I pull a jib on and I leave my mainsail off, what is the boat going to do? The weight of that sail is actually going to pull the nose of the boat down. The opposite is going to apply if I only pull on the mainsail. If I pull on the mainsail and I let the jib do nothing, the boat is going to round up. Now as many of my crews know and people that live around me and sometimes get forced to practice it, we take our rudders clean out of our boat and you actually have to learn to sail the boat with no rudder in. The whole purpose of this is to teach you how important it is to trim your sails correctly for balance. The other thing is it teaches you how to steer off your hull. It's simple. Whichever sail is on, the boat's going to pivot away from the breeze to whichever sail is on. You don't have to, have to completely let a sail off for it to happen either. You can slightly over trim one and slightly under trim the other and achieve the same thing. So if you're practicing slow boat control when your rudder's not working, practice steering with your sails. Practice it, it's easy. When you're coming into a top mark rounding, slightly undersheet the mainsail and that'll help the boat bear away. At a bottom mark rounding, pull the mainsail on quicker than it needs to come on and that'll force the boat to spin up faster without requiring you to use the rudder. So my first hint to you is steer with your sails. Believe it or not, it still works on a square run. If my boat is now running down the board, there's my pivot point still there. There is how it's going to pivot. If I've got all my mainsail on this side and no pole out head saw, my boat is going to want to round up. If I balance that out with a little bit of pole head saw, my boat will stay fairly straight. If I need to bear away, I need to reduce my mainsail area size a little bit so I could perhaps pull my mainsail on and shrink that size but in that case I'll steer with my hull and that's the next one we're going to come to. So, on NS14s we have quite aggressive chines. If I look at our boats for a second I kept picturing them as sort of squarish looking things with a point on the front. Where my boat is in the water, I have a fairly curved looking section of the boat here and a fairly curved looking section of the boat there. And that's how the water's flowing past it. On the back of the boat, I have this tiny little rudder. If I heel my boat to windward or heel my boat to leeward, what I'm doing is over exaggerating either this side's chine or this side's chine at which point my water's flowing past it. So if I 
build my boat this way, what I'm doing is digging this chine into the water a lot more, which is causing this side to steer the boat. Now, if I count that off for a second, my rudder's that big. My chine is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, however many it is in real life. So much bigger. So if you're not sailing your boat flat, or if you're using the wrong chines, and the prime example for me is a top mark rounding, wind coming down the board. On a bare way up here, so many times I see people get to that top mark, and just before they get to the top mark, their crew sits up, or the skipper sits up, which is the exact opposite of what they should do, because as soon as they sit up, what does the boat do? It heals away from them, which causes the boat to want to round up, at which point now I've got to pull harder on the rudder to fight that force of that chine to cause it to steer away. If you do this correctly, as you get to the top mark, as you get to the top mark, you actually want to lean your boat away from the mark. So that means you're going to roll on top of your head. The second you roll on top of the head without using any rudder, the boat will start bearing away. If you then ease sails, the boat will continue to bear away. And that was requiring no run. So it doesn't matter if it's the top mark, the wing mark, or the bottom mark. My suggestion to you always is, if the mark is here, and your boat is here, you need to lean your boat away from the mark, and that will cause your boat to steer around. Practice it. Have a go. If you want to really feel the effects of it and you're brave enough, pull your rudder up so you've only got this much in the water and you'll feel it. If you get even braver, pull your rudder out, try sailing without your rudder. But first two forms of steering is sails and the hull. The rudder is the obvious one that everyone likes to use, it's one beginners use, it's the one you get taught the first day you come to a sailing school. Here's a tiller, this is how you steer. And yes, it is how you steer, it's a coarse form of steering, but at the same time, it's also going to slow you down. I'm not going to discuss right here because that one's obvious, but I just need people to remember, sail steer boat, hull steer boat, and try and use the rudder as a trailer that just follows your boat.